All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Happy Flex Friday. I am trainer Mike, excited for another in-home workout here for you guys. We're going live right now on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and I'm excited to be here with you today to take you through this in-home workout. Hopefully, everybody's having a great Friday, Flex Friday, too, and we're going to get a massive Flex Friday going on here in just a little bit, but first, we got to get this workout going. So, Today, guys, this is the Lean at Home program, okay? Bodybuilding.com, I'm BodyFit. So if you have not downloaded the BodyFit app, go to the BodyFit app, download it, and uh, sign up for the Elite membership there. Go to the Lean at Home program. Now, we're gonna be doing some exercises from day 12 today, okay? So this is day 12 of the Lean at Home program on the BodyFit Elite app. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask those. We'll do our best to answer as many of those as we possibly can. But um, for today, so Lean at Home is a full body workout, okay? So a full body workout, we're going to cover everything today from, you know, the upper body, obviously, lower body. We're going to try and hit everything we can with very, very minimal equipment, okay? Now, um, so what we have to do is we want to make sure that we get a good warm-up in prior to getting this workout going, and then we're going to dive right into it. So with that being said, if I had to give... Probably the best warm-up exercise, the single best warm-up exercise that you could possibly do, I would say it would be the inchworm, okay? The inchworm is one of the absolute best warm-up exercises that you could possibly do. So we're gonna start with that. So before we get going, let's warm it up. So for the inchworm, guys, we're gonna take a wider stance because I've got some really tight hamstrings. So if you have tight hamstrings like me, you're gonna to wanna to take a wider stance on your inchworm as well. And we're gonna throw in a little shoulder tap here, and the shoulder tap's gonna help make sure that we get our upper body warmed up with our legs. So I'm just gonna do five of these as part of my warm up. I already did some foam rolling, and now we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a warm up before we dive in to the Lean at Home full body program. So five inchworms here, we crawl out, shoulder taps, and then we're gonna crawl back up. Good to get the hamstrings going, get the shoulders going, get everything going before we dive into this program. There's three, we're gonna do a couple more here. All right, so again, inchworms, great little warm up that you guys can do to get going prior to your workout. Now that's just part of the warm up that we did. We did some, like I said, some foam rolling and some active stretching prior to that. So as we go throughout this, uh, this live, guys, we're gonna be at answering questions. So if you guys have questions, you can ask them whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, we'll do our best to get to all of them. So. Um, first question, what has been the most difficult muscle group to train at home? Without a doubt, back. Back has been one of the most challenging muscle groups to hit at home. Um, there's a lot that you can do with bands when it comes to training back at home, but definitely one of the most challenging. What about you guys? What's been the most challenging body part to hit? So let's get started. We're going to do supersets today. So for supersets, we go right from one exercise directly to the next. So we're gonna start with jump squats and we're gonna superset that with a lunge twist. So three sets of 10 to 12 is what we're shooting for here. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Jump squats. We're just getting a little bit of elevation off the ground, come back down to that squat position and we'll superset that with a lunge twist. Let's go. Okay, 10 to 12 there. Now for the lunge twist, we're gonna step out, twist to the side that we step with, and back.
go. The lunge twist, jump squat, superset there. So we got from YouTube, question here. Is running in stairs good for fat loss? So like alternating days there. And yeah, stairs are awesome, especially if you're looking to do like high intensity interval training. You can go really hard for 30 seconds, back off for like 90 seconds, and then go really hard again for 30. Um, next question, I'm a beginner and want to get strong. What do I need to do? As a beginner, focus on the basics, okay? The basics are super, super important. You wanna be able to get, you know, things like your squats, your deadlift, your pull up, your overhead press, very, very important. Another question, to lose weight, should I have vegetables? Yes, vegetables are super, super important. They're gonna provide a lot of nutrients and they're gonna help you feel full without the extra calories. So, good questions, guys. As always, stay hydrated. We're drinking some amino acids today. Ah, all right. Let's get into it. Jump squats, supersetted with lunge twists. Let's go. There we go. And then into the lunge twist. Now, very important, guys, as you're doing the lunge twist, make sure you twist your entire torso. What you don't want to do is get caught in just moving your arms, okay? Okay. Next question. What are like, the foods that you should have in your diet? The must-have foods in your diet. Foods that are high in protein are going to be really, really important for you. Um, very, very important. So, make sure you got... Foods high in protein or lean protein sources, egg whites, chicken, lean ground beef, ground turkey, things like that, and vegetables, obviously very important as well. From YouTube, if I do cardio and strength training at the same time, when and how long should I do the cardio? Ideally, you break those up a little bit, but if you have to do your cardio like right after your strength training, try and limit it to about 30 seconds, okay? Or 30 seconds, 30 minutes, okay? because you don't wanna be exercising for longer than about two hours at a time. So if you're strength training for 60, 90 minutes, definitely don't push it any harder than that. Another one from YouTube, is one hour on the bike long enough to lose weight? It definitely can be, um, but really it comes down to your diet. I've seen people spend an hour a day on the bike easy and still not lose weight because they've got a very, very poor diet. So yeah, that's plenty enough if you're able to control your nutrition as well. Um, final question before we dive back into it, what's the best workout for losing fat? This is a great one right here. Workout for losing fat, the one that's gonna burn a lot of calories, help create that calorie deficit for you, is gonna be very important for losing weight. All right, let's go. We're diving in, third set, we're doing three sets of these. Lean at home program, jump squats, lunge twists, Let's go. Okay, we want to move quick in between these supersets, not a lot of rest.
All right, good stuff right there. So we're gonna take a little break before we dive into some of the intervals in between the sets here. So the Lean at Home program provides you with the strength training portion, but we also do some interval cardio in between some of those sets as well. So uh, from YouTube, what is better for losing fat? Doing more cardio or following a low carb diet? They're both important. Like you have to incorporate the nutrition aspect without a doubt. But if you want to accelerate your results, do the cardio as well, but you can't do it without the nutrition, okay? Um, from YouTube, I need an alternative to squats for an easier glute strength. We're gonna do some hip thrusts here in a minute, some glute bridges that are definitely gonna help with that. What are the best foods for bulking? The, the foods that are easy for you to get high calories in while still getting a lot of nutrients in. So, you know, things that are easier to digest, jasmine rice, cream of rice, things like that are definitely a good option for you. Um, YouTube, is it better to have five to six meals a day or intermittent fasting? Do what works for you, okay? Um, I'm not a huge fan of intermittent fasting myself, but I know a lot of people that it works for. I'm just kind of old school, six, seven meals a day, so I don't like it, but that doesn't mean it's not right for you. So. In between the strength training here, we do have some intervals, okay? Now we're not gonna do all of the intervals, but I wanna give you guys a good idea of what some of those look like. So jumping jacks, supersetted with ice skaters. A couple great ways to keep your heart rate up in between these sets. So jumping jacks, keep your arms straight. What I don't wanna see is these, okay? We're doing jumping jacks, try and keep your arms as straight as you can. Try and keep things tight, guys. All right, now ice skaters. Ice skaters, we're gonna jump from one side to the other and touch down, okay? Keep the heart rate up in between sets. Quick, lateral movements here. Woo, keep that heart rate up. Combine the strength training with the cardio for the Lean at Home program to see some awesome, awesome results, guys. All right, a couple more questions before we dive into this. Now, I love it. A couple of you asked me to take my shirt off, grab the sword, and put it up over my head. Maybe when we get done, but it's definitely premature for grabbing the sword right now. So we'll do that maybe in a minute. How do I gain muscle if I'm a hard gainer? Um, eat more food, okay? Plan out your day a little better. Eat more food. Focus on your primary strength movements to gain as much strength and size as you can. Um, do I need to take supplements? Supplements are there to help you, okay? That's the whole point of supplements. You don't absolutely have to have them, but they accelerate results and they make life a lot more convenient. So for that reason, I definitely recommend supplements. All right, guys, we're gonna dive into our next round of strength training here. We're gonna do push-ups. Close to wide grip push-ups here. And we're gonna superset this with a single leg glute bridge. So I'm gonna adjust our YouTube and Facebook followers here a little bit so you can see what we got going on. Push-ups supersetted with single leg glute bridge. Do not underestimate the value of a push-up when it comes to building strength. Nice and slow. If they're too easy for you, slow down the movement. Really, really slow it down. Here we go. Kiss that floor every time. Do not slack on your depth. Now, we're gonna roll right over onto the back here. We're gonna do a single leg glute bridge. So one leg goes up. We're gonna drive through the heel of this other leg. Hands can be down to the side, across your chest, wherever you'd like them. Drive and down.
Okay, switch legs. Get that booty fired up. You guys asking what are some good alternatives for squats? Still work the legs, that's definitely one there. All right, from YouTube, do I need to take, or excuse me, I already answered the supplements one. Um, I don't feel sore after a workout. Am I not going hard enough? No, soreness, you don't have to get sore to have a great workout, okay? Some workouts are gonna make you sore, that's fine, but you do not have to get sore to have a great workout. Um, next up, we got a question, does creatine work? Yes, guys, creatine is one of the most effective, most studied supplements on the face of the earth. So creatine, absolutely great supplement for you guys to incorporate. Um, and, and honestly, if you're looking to gain strength or size, it's probably the best supplement for you to take. I recommend five to seven grams creatine monohydrate immediately after a workout. And uh, all right, let's dive back into it. We've got push-ups supersetted with glute bridges. And here we go, guys. Nice and slow, okay? Get that face down to the ground. to the glute bridge. Remember, the key with these supersets is to move quickly in between sets. Right into the glute bridge. Okay. Switch legs. You should be done slowly too. Notice how we're not super ballistic with this movement. We're controlling it. Drive through the heel. And so as you're doing that too, it's important that you really make that strong mind-muscle connection with the glutes, with the hamstrings. It's really easy to start feeling that in the lower back if you're not careful with how you do it. All right, a couple more questions from Facebook. Can I get big muscles with dumbbells? Yeah, I think people, dumbbells are awesome. Now, if you're talking about the five pound pink dumbbells being the only option you have, maybe not, but you can do a lot with dumbbells if you have a variety of sizes there. Um, Facebook, thank you for doing this. Awesome workout information. My pleasure, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, from Instagram, is pre-workout bad for your health? No, I mean, if you have like high blood pressure and you're taking a high caffeine pre-workout, yeah, that's not a good idea. So always make sure that if you have any pre-existing conditions that you, you know, take care of those prior to taking those supplements. But no, it's not bad for your health. How important is stretching? You know. You want to do a good active dynamic stretch before your workouts. Save the static stretching where you stretch and hold for after your workouts. How long should my workouts last? You know, guys, it really depends on how, what your goal is, how intense you're going. Anywhere from about 30 to 90 minutes, usually pretty, pretty good um, options there. What's the best sup for weight loss from Instagram? I really like a combination of CLA, L-carnitine, and obviously caffeine as being a good option there. Okay. Dive right in, guys. Push-ups. Nice and slow, nice and low. Do not underestimate the power of the push-up. This is too easy for you. Throw a backpack on with some weight in it. Grab a kid, put a kid on your back. Grab your spouse, your girlfriend, boyfriend, put them on your back. Whatever you gotta do. Nice and slow, nice and low. Okay, 
Now we're flipping over here onto our back for our final set of the glute bridges. Okay, switch. That half second pause at the top on the glute bridge is, bridge is gonna be super, super important. So I'm gonna adjust our YouTube and Facebook peeps here up a little bit for our next exercise. So if you guys have those questions, ask those questions, we'll do our best to answer those now. And we'll also do a little Q and A at the end for you guys as well. So YouTube, what are your favorite core exercises? You know, if I'm in the gym, I really like a hanging leg raise as kind of a good core. Um, and I really like ab wheel rollouts as well. Having a hard time getting macros in um, without going over my calories, what should I do? Plan in advance. Okay, so a lot of food logging, food planning, log your food ahead of time. And so you're not like having to pull out your calculator at the end of the day and try and figure out how to get your macros in. Okay. Um, YouTube, can I still put on mass while doing home workouts? It depends. If you're a beginner, yes. If you're intermediate or advanced, it depends on how much equipment you have. But make sure you train intent. So if you're dealing with like all light weight, then you want to be able to to do higher reps, obviously. Train close to failure. Work on your tempo, really slow down your reps. That stuff's really important. So in between these guys, again, we have some intervals where we work on cardio. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the cardio intervals that we have here for in between this one. Now this is a, um, we're gonna do like a mountain climber here, and we're gonna superset that with a hollow hold. So I'll show you what those are. So for this one, we're gonna go a little slower because we're trying to hit abs. So nice and slow. Okay, now the hollow hold is actually a great ab exercise for this one. We're just gonna put our legs out, and we're gonna put our arms out, and we're just gonna hold here, okay? And you're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds. Elevate your head, your shoulder blades just slightly. Good, all right. So getting a little bit of core in, in between some of our strength exercises here. Another question from, we got some YouTube questions, some Facebook questions to answer. Is it possible to get a pulled muscle in your abs when doing core? Yes, you can pull any kind of muscle. So, you know, it's definitely possible to do there. Um, can you please suggest any exercise for reduced fat from lower abdominal? There's no exercise that can specifically target an area of your body to reduce fat on. So that's definitely something that is gonna come down to more of your nutrition than anything else as far as that is concerned. I'm a petite girl and losing weight. How do I gain food? It's food. You have to eat more food. Track your food at the beginning of the day. Figure out how you're gonna achieve your desired calories and macros there. Okay, now guys, let's dive into this here. We're gonna go into our next exercises. This is for the Lean at Home program, okay? Body Fit app, download it, get that elite membership. So for this one, I'm gonna grab an office chair, okay? So we're gonna do a single leg squat, and we're gonna superset a bench dip with this, okay? So I'm gonna lower this down to my desired level. Make sure you have something sturdy that you're doing this on. We're gonna do a single leg squat, and we'll superset that with the dip, okay? So we're working legs, triceps here. We're gonna actually sit all the way down into the chair and then come back up, okay? Now 
Now, if you have to touch down your foot in between, that's okay. But if you can keep your balance, that would be ideal. You gotta reset, reset. All right, now we're gonna turn around and we're gonna do bench dips. So here, I'm gonna actually use this chair and I'm gonna elevate my feet on the couch to try and do, actually I'm gonna do this reverse. We'll put hands on the couch, feet on the chair for some bench dips. So part of training at home, guys, is being a little innovative. It's learning how to adjust, adapt, definitely come outside your comfort zone. Single leg squats, way out of my comfort zone, but it's good to try these different things. I think you'll be surprised the benefits you get from them. All right, take a little break here before we dive in to our next set. A couple questions to answer here. What is your favorite kind of workout? Guys, I, I love just a good old in-gym workout. If I had to pick a muscle group that I really like to train is legs, okay? You know, getting nasty on some hack squats, you know, walking lunges, leg press, things like that. Absolutely love a good leg workout in the gym. Do you have any tips for starting bodybuilding? Um, be realistic, okay? A lot of people set these crazy, I wanna get 50 pounds of muscle, you know, and, all this crazy stuff, be very realistic and understand that it is truly a marathon, it's not a sprint. So understand the long haul of it. You know, I've been bodybuilding for 13 years now, I've done 35 shows, and you know, you're never satisfied. It's, part, it's the journey, okay? You cannot do it for the immediate gratification of just doing a show, you gotta enjoy the journey. How many times a week should we train abs? Depends on how hard you train them. Okay, um, you can train abs every day if you just go light body weight, but I recommend more, you know, like three times per week with some weight in there as well, okay? Um, what was my advice on training each body part twice a week? Absolutely. If you wanna gain size or strength, you should train each body part at least twice a week, okay? Somebody has a hard time doing dips due to a lack of tricep strength, okay? What should I do? Maybe don't elevate your feet, okay? Keep your feet on the ground if you have a hard time with that one. Okay, here we go. Back over here, we are on to our single leg squats. Again, no shame in this game, guys. This is not my strength. I've got no problem looking like a fool on here. Leave your ego at the door and make sure you're doing stuff the way you're supposed to, even if you don't love it, okay? Switch your feet now. Whoo! Okay, now we're moving on to our dips. Chair goes in front of us. Yet, yeah, if you don't feel comfortable, maybe don't have the tricep strength to do this with your feet elevated, do it with your feet on the ground. You can easily do it like this. But if you wanna make it harder, elevate your feet.
Starting to feel some good blood flow. You burn a lot of calories in a workout like this where you work both upper body and lower body. It's called peripheral heart action when you superset the lower body with the upper body and that shunting of blood upper to lower actually has been shown to burn a lot of calories. We'll answer a few more questions here and then dive into our third set of the single leg squats and dips. Facebook, almost 50 years old, lighter weights, more reps, or more rest days. You know, you really have to listen to your body. If you are able to sleep eight hours every night, if you are supplementing right, if your nutrition is right, and you feel like you can recover, then train more often. You don't need to take more rest days, but if you have a hard time recovering, you start seeing the signs of overtraining, insomnia, increased aggression, loss of appetite, then you maybe want to incorporate more rest days. Facebook, should I do full body workouts with an injured knee? You obviously need to consult your physician, um, make sure that you're following any kind of restrictions there, but uh, also go by what's tolerated. If you feel a tremendous amount of pain while you're exercising in a joint, definitely don't do it. Uh, Instagram, do you use glutamine and post-workout? Yes, I use glutamine, five grams in the morning, five grams post-workout, and five grams right before bed as well. YouTube, best time for a workout, morning or evening? Guys, there's no best time for a workout, okay? Um, you're gonna work out when you have the time to, when you're able to work out. Um, but I would say if you had to pick one, go with morning, just so you can get the metabolic benefits of you know burning calories early on in the day. Okay, here we go, woo! On to the single leg squat. This is our third set here. Lean at home program, body fit. Get on that elite program right, right away. Here we go. Okay, eight on each side. We're doing eight to 10 on each side here. Switch legs. And you might find you have better balance on one leg than the other, really common, okay? A lot of people have like a plant foot where they typically have better stability, okay? Dips. guys so there we have our three sets of the single leg squat and bench dips really really good working the legs working the upper body and definitely working up a sweat maybe it's just hot in the office crack a window good thinking I should have thought of that yeah um, what are the best recovery moves a lot of recovery moves okay um, you know recovery active rest I'm a big fan of active rest. So recovery movement, I would include things like foam rolling, dynamic stretching, keep the body moving, keep the blood flowing to get good rest in there, okay? Um, really important that you guys definitely incorporate active rest. I'm never a fan of just taking a rest day and sitting on the couch all day or anything like that. Always do active rest as that is super important. So again, in between the strength training, there is a lot of cardio stuff in the lean at home program. And we're not doing all of it because I'd just be breathing too hard to even answer any questions. But for the next portion of the cardio is bear crawl. So ask your questions now if you have them guys. We're gonna do a quick little Q and A session right after this to make sure we answer as many questions as we can. For the bear crawl, you know, it's a really, really good movement. And the idea of getting on, you know, your hands and your, your feet automatically works your core. And then just by moving in that bear crawl movement, you're gonna get a lot of benefits there to the shoulders, to the core, to the upper body, 
and it's very taxing cardiovascular wise. So you're gonna have a great ability to get your heart rate up and burn a lot of calories as you're doing that as well. So again, as a recap, the Lean at Home program, download the BodyFit app, get the Elite membership. This is the Lean at Home day 12 we're doing today. And I want you guys to try it out, follow it along, great program to do. We haven't used any kind of tools today for resistance, no extra weight. We're sweating, we're burning a lot of calories, we're getting a great workout in. So if that's what you guys are struggling with right now, let's get a good workout in with very minimal equipment. Try the Lean at Home program. It can be awesome for you guys. So with that being said, you know, a couple more questions for you guys. Why can't I build muscle on Instagram? You know, really comes down to nutrition for either building muscle or losing body fat. You know, it's gonna be your, your biggest tool or it's gonna be the thing that hurts you the most. So with muscle building, Make sure you're getting a gram of protein per pound of body weight is a good place to start and make sure you consume that protein pretty frequently throughout the day. Uh, from YouTube, how do you recover after a workout? Shake or actual food? I do a shake immediately following a workout. So I do about 50 grams of whey protein isolate with glutamine, with creatine immediately following a workout. And then I eat about an hour and a half after that. So. I don't like to eat a whole food meal immediately following my workout. I just wanna get that shake in, get the protein immediately, get the other nutrients, and then wait just a little bit before I have the rest of my food. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing a whole food meal immediately after your workout, but that's the benefit of a shake. Like, especially as gyms start opening again, it's so much more convenient just to have a scoop of protein powder with you that you can throw into a shaker bottle and be able to drink that right after a workout than have to worry about keeping your chicken and rice cold and you know finding a microwave so and uh, a lot of people they just don't have a big appetite after a workout too so um, definitely important to have a shake for that um, from Instagram how important is meal timing four to five meals per day uh, depends on what your goal is okay you should eat frequently throughout the day if your goal is to build muscle okay if you want to build muscle the study show that getting a frequent supply of protein in you know every three to four hours is pretty important okay but how important is meal timing? It's not as important as getting your overall calories and macronutrients in for the day. So you're really splitting hairs. You don't need to get too concerned about that, but I do recommend having four to five meals per day. If they're not the exact same time or perfectly even split out, that's okay. It's not gonna make or break your overall results with that. So um, really good questions today, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in for this. Go try this program on your own. You guys can follow me on uh, Instagram at TrainerMike1 if you guys want to check out any more content there. We're going to try and keep doing these on Fridays. Uh, next week, I think we got a fun one planned for you guys. It's going to be a little bit different. Maybe incorporate some kind of equipment to do there as well. Um, another one from Instagram before we take off. Why do you take branched chain amino acids? You know, maybe you're not believing in them. You think it's the biggest fitness scam. Here's the deal. Branched chain amino acids do work, Okay. And they work well for making sure that you prevent catabolism. Do they build muscle? No, they're not going to build muscle. And so don't take them thinking you're going to build muscle, but branch chain amino acids can help prevent muscle breakdown if you're in a severe calorie deficit. Okay, I personally prefer essential amino acids, which gives you all of the amino acids that you need to not only prevent muscle breakdown, but could potentially help with muscle protein synthesis as well. So that's something to incorporate also and um you know again with supplements guys they're they're supplements they're there to make things more convenient to help accelerate results but uh you know branch chain amino acids if you're getting a lot of protein in and you're in a calorie surplus you probably don't need them but if you are dieting you're in a calorie you know deficit and you're training really hard they absolutely can be beneficial okay so keep that in mind um, as well so as far as Instagram, you guys check it out. At Trainer Mike One is the the account there where I do all my stuff. I appreciate you guys checking it out. Tag me in your Flex Friday pictures on Instagram. But that's it for today. I'm gonna tune out for you guys. Boom! Flex Friday going down in home. Get it done. Tag me in your stuff. Thanks, guys.